John Stephen Jones, born the 24th of March 1944, is a Welsh geneticist and from 1995 to 1999 and 2008 to June 2010 was head of the Department of Genetics, Evolution and Environment at University College London. His studies are conducted in the Galton Laboratory. He is also a television presenter and a prize-winning author on the subject of biology, especially evolution. He is a popular contemporary writer on evolution. In 1996 his writing won him the Michael Faraday Prize for his numerous, wide-ranging contributions to the public understanding of science in areas such as human evolution and variation, race, sex, inherited disease and genetic manipulation through his many broadcasts on radio and television, his lectures, popular science books, and his regular science column in the Daily Telegraph and contributions to other newspaper media. Topic: Early life and education. Jones was born in Aberystwyth, Wales, to Thomas Gwilym Jones and Lydia Ann Jones. His parents having met as students at the University of Aberystwyth. Until he was about ten years old, the family were accommodated alternately at his paternal grandparents' house in New Quay, Ceredigion, and his maternal grandparents' house near Aberystwyth. Later, the family moved to the Wirral, returning to Wales for their holidays. Joan's paternal grandfather and great grandfather were both sea captains. Joan's father, a PhD chemist, worked on detergents such as GIF. Dylan Thomas was an acquaintance of his father. As a child Jones often stayed at his paternal grandparents' home and spent a lot of his time in the attic which contained some seafaring equipment, and boxes of books covering a wide variety of topics, many of which Jones read. He also went to libraries and by the age of 14 years he had read all the works of Charles Dickens. As a child in Ceredigion Jones spoke a lot of Welsh until he was six or seven years old, and as a keen observer of local wildlife was particularly interested in birds. Jones was a pupil at Wirral Grammar School for Boys. At the age of 13 to 14 years old Jones was inspired to study biology by a school teacher. Jones was rejected by all the Welsh universities, so he applied to the University of Edinburgh for an undergraduate degree, which had a closing date seven days later, and he was accepted onto a zoology undergraduate course. He stayed on in Edinburgh to do research for a Doctor of Philosophy degree on the ecological genetics of sepia, a snail whose shell is polymorphic in color pattern, making it a model organism for evolutionary biologists. He developed an interest in snails from Brian Clark his PhD supervisor. Topic: <laughs> Career and Research. After his PhD, Jones also completed postdoctoral research into the genetics of Drosophila at the University of Chicago to widen his experience. Much of Jones's research has been concerned with snails and the light their study can shed on biodiversity and genetics. Topic: <laughs> Media and Outreach. Jones was the 1991 Wreath Lecturer on BBC Radio, with a series entitled The Language of the Genes, the basis of his 1993 book of the same name. Audio podcast, BBC Wreath Lectures Archive, 1974-2010 Transcripts, BBC Wreath Lectures 1990-1999 He presented in The Blood, a six-part TV series on human genetics first broadcast in 1996, see book of same name in bibliography
In July 2011, Jones produced a report dealing with science reporting issues at the BBC. He was critical of the BBC for giving too much space and credence to maverick views on science, including skeptics of anthropogenic global warming. Jones was commissioned by the BBC Trust to write a report on the organization's science reporting, which was published in July 2011. This was broadly supportive of the BBC's accuracy, impartiality, and science coverage, although it also made a number of suggestions. These included better interaction of staff across the organization on science topics and in particular an end to false balance. Jones describes a t tempts to give a place to anyone, however unqualified, who claims interest can make for false balance, to free publicity to marginal opinions and not to impartiality, but its opposite. The BBC's response to the recommendations was generally positive, several of which it immediately implemented. Topic: Publications. Jones, Steve, 1993. The Language of the Genes. Flamingo. ISBN 0-00-655243-9, winner of Aventus Prize winner Jones, Steve, Van Loon, Borin 1993. Genetics for Beginners. Icon Books. ISBN 1-84046-636-7. Martin, Robert D., Pilbeam, David R., eds. The Cambridge Encyclopedia of Human Evolution. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0-521-46786-1 Jones, Steve In the Blood, God, Genes and Destiny. Houghton Miffin. ISBN 0-00-255512-3 Jones, Steve Almost Like a Whale, The Origin of Species Updated. Doubleday. ISBN 0-385-40985-0 Jones, Steve Darwin's Ghost – The Origin of Species Updated. Valentine Books. ISBN 0-345-42277-5 Jones, Steve Why, The Descent of Men. Flamingo. ISBN 0-618-13930-3 Jones, Steve The Single Helix, A Turn Around the World of Science. Little, Brown. ISBN 978-0-349-11940-3 Jones, Steve Coral. Little, Brown. ISBN 978-0-316-729383 Jones, Steve Darwin's Island. Little, Brown. ISBN 978-1-4087-0000-6 Jones, Steve The Serpent's Promise, The Bible Retold as Science. Little, Brown. ISBN 978-1-4087-0285-7 Jones, Steve no Need for Geniuses, Revolutionary Science in the Age of the Guillotine. Little, Brown. ISBN 978-0-3494-0545-2 Jones, Steve the 26th of January 2017. Evolution, Illis. Rowan Clifford. London, Ladybird Books. ISBN 978-0-7181-8628-9.
Steve Jones' view from the lab Steve Jones, why is there so much genetic diversity? Steve Jones, don't blame the genes. Topic. Awards and honors Jones was elected a Fellow of the Royal Society FRS in 2012. He won their Michael Faraday Prize in 1996 and delivered the Wreath Lectures in 1991. Topic. Personal life Jones' life partner since 1977 has been the award-winning American documentary maker Norma Percy. They married in 2004. Jones is a patron of Humanists UK. He was awarded the second Irwin Prize for Secularist of the Year by the National Secular Society on the 7th of October 2006. On 1 January 2011 he became president of the Association for Science Education. Topic. Views on private education In an interview on the BBC Radio 5 show, Five Live Breakfast, hosted by Nikki Campbell and Sheila Fogarty on 13 January 2009, Jones described private schools as a cancer on the education system. Jones cites private schools as one of the reasons that Britain remains as socially stratified as it is. Among the advantages in private schools compared to state schools, Jones listed smaller classroom sizes, highly trained teachers, better facilities, and coaching through university interviews. Topic: <laughs> Views on religion. Jones, along with 54 other public figures, signed an open letter published on 15 September 2010 in The Guardian, stating their opposition to Pope Benedict XVI's estate visit to the UK. Jones has also stated that creationism is anti science and criticized creationists such as Ken Ham. Jones suggested in a BBC Radio Ulster interview in 2006 that creationists should be forbidden from being medical doctors because all of its creationism's claims fly in the face of the whole of science. And he further claimed that no serious biologist can believe in biblical creation. For Jones, evolution is the grammar of biology. Jones elaborated on his full position on creationism in a public lecture entitled Why Creationism is Wrong and Evolution is Right. National Life Stories conducted an oral history interview C with Steve Jones in 2015 for its science and religion collection held by the British Library. Topic. Views on human evolution Jones' view that in humans, "...natural selection has to some extent been repealed," dates back at least to 1991 and has been the focus of a number of newspaper reports and radio interviews. Referring to the title of a public lecture entitled, "...is human evolution over?" He stated, For those of you who have a train to catch, the answer is yes. So you can leave now. His views are largely based on his claim that reduced juvenile mortality, decreasing age of fathers, and decreased geographical isolation of populations in Western societies reduce evolution. Both the data supporting these assertions and his views of the way these factors influence evolution in populations have been extensively criticized by other academics. 